Hi, hello, hi, how are you? So uh, last time we talked about describing the solution set in the context where there are infinitely many solutions. I want to continue that today. Today I want to introduce a way of writing these things, both the linear systems and also the solutions, that uh, saves a lot of, uh, of the bookkeeping burden and also, it will turn out, uh, adds some conceptual meaning to the whole thing. Um, so you may have seen matrices and vectors in another context. You might have seen it in a physics class, for example. Um, at the moment, we're not interpreting it so much as the kinds of things you see in a physics class or a calculus 3 class. At the moment, we're just going to introduce them as a place to put numbers. That's all. But soon enough, we'll give them a more conceptual meaning. But at the moment, just simply a place to hold numbers. So an M by N matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. It's just numbers, no particular physical meaning. M rows, N columns. You read that out loud as M by N, always the number of rows first, because you've got to put something first. You might as well always put the same thing first and be organized about it. The numbers in the matrix are called entries. So 3 is an entry, minus 5 is an entry, 6 is an entry. This is a 2 by 3 matrix, 1 row, two rows, three columns, one, two, three. So two by three, always the number of rows first. You often call matrices, often name matrices with capital Roman letters. And then when you want to talk about the entries in the matrix, for example, the four here in the second row, first column, you often use the associated lowercase Roman letters. That's the convention that I'm going to be sticking to. Not 100% not of the time, but uh, uh, 95% of the time we'll be writing here capital Roman letter for the matrix and lower Roman letter for the entry and you'll often see that in practice very often. Okay, a column vector is uh, often just called a vector is a matrix with a single column. If a matrix has a single row, it's called a row vector. And again, you may have seen these things where they have some meaning. Um, and we'll get to those soon enough. But at the moment, we're just simply using them as places to hold numbers. The entries of a vector are sometimes called components. Instead of entry up here, you often call it component. And the column or row vector whose components are all zeros is the zero vector. It happens to come up a lot in practice. I like to denote vectors with an over arrow, with an arrow on top. So uh, let me bring up my, do, 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 there we go, and bring up my, my piece of paper here. And uh, so I'll, whoops, a little shadow there. So I'll denote, I'll denote vectors, uh, where, there we go. <laughs> I'll denote vectors with an over arrow. Uh, in, in handwriting, I'll write something like that, V or W something like that. Okay, so I'll denote vectors with an over arrow. Let me bring back to the, there we go. In, uh, in, in the textbook, the uh, over arrow is easier to read than my handwriting. That's just, just the way it goes. This particular, uh, this particular column vector has three components, minus one, minus one half, and zero. Or I should have mentioned, I like over arrow because uh, you often see both face, very often see both face in, uh, in other books, but I can't do both face in handwriting or on a blackboard, so, uh, so I like the over arrow and I put it in both places. But oh, both face is very common, very, very common. In fact, maybe more common than over arrow. So this is a row vector with three components, and this is the two-component zero vector. See a zero with an over arrow. Oops. Um, I'm going to want to uh, be able to add these and to scale and to rescale them to double them or triple them. So I need to define those operations. So this says if you have uh, two vectors, u and v, then you can add them by adding the components. You notice, don't you, that this says down to un and this says down to vn. So they are the same size. If this one has five entries, then this one has five entries also. Anyway, if they have the same number of entries, then you add just by adding the components. And you can also rescale the components. That's called the scalar multiplication of the real number r. In this context, r is called the scalar. And if, if, for example, you want to multiply the whole vector by r, why well, you multiply each of its components by r. And the advantage of all this is that we can take linear combinations, and that's the key in this course. We can take linear combinations of vectors 3 times 1, 2, minus 2 times 0, 1. And when you do 3 times 1 minus 2 times 0, you find yourself at 3. When you do 3 times 2 minus 2 times 1, you find yourself at 4. So these definitions on the top half of the slide enable me to do linear combinations as the example on the bottom half of the slide. 
One advantage of the matrix notation is when you write these systems down, there's a lot of sort of writing x's and y's and equal signs. And we can get rid of all that just by writing the numbers themselves, the minus 3, the 0, the 2. And that's what I have here. So I can turn this system into what's called here an augmented matrix. The vertical bar makes it augmented. You, by just simply writing down the real number coefficients on the left of the vertical bar and the constants on the right of the vertical bar, the vertical bar just reminds me that the ones on the left and the ones on the right are a little different. Do Gauss's method, the same Gauss's method steps as we've been doing for so long. This is obviously echelon form, and it so happens to be the case you see that there is a row with x leading, there is a row with y leading, but there's no row with z leading, so we know that there's going to be infinitely many solutions. And we see the two equations on this. This abbreviates the two equations. Minus 3x plus 2z equals minus 1. There we go for the top. And minus 2y plus 8 thirds z equals minus 2. There we go for the bottom. There's no reason why I can't take those two equations and do what I've been doing before, which is to parameterize. That is to say, take z and use it as the variable with which you express the other variables. So you express x in terms of z and y in terms of z. And you end up with this three equations here. x is expressed in terms of z, y is expressed in terms of z, and it's a little silly, but z is expressed in terms of z. That gives me this solution set, and I wrote it in vector notation here. Uh, the vector notation is it's very nice here because it organizes the, the constants, the one-third, the one, and the zero, all in one place. And the coefficients of z, the two-thirds, the, the four-thirds, and the one, all in one place here. So this is an especially organized way to write down the information that is here. And it's awfully nice because right away we see, for example, what happens when you plug in different z's. If you plug in a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a minus 1 half or z, you get the whole family of solutions, the whole family of x, y, z's written out there very plainly. So this is an organized way to write this. Just to have a second example, there's nothing special about this example so much. Just, just, it's just a simply different example illustrating the same thing. Here's a system, and I can write it in this augmented matrix form. When you do the, when you do Gauss's method, there you get echelon form, and you convert it to this, to to this way of writing the the solution set, the, the way of writing the infinitely many different vectors that all solve this system, infinitely diff many different x, y, z, w's that all solve this t system I started with. You see there is a z times and a w times. And there's also some constants. So it's again, the, the advantage of this of this particular notation is that it shows uh, the constants isolated, the coefficients of z isolated, and the coefficients of w isolated. So it's an organized way of doing the job that we've been doing so far already. Okay, okay. Then I'll, I'll uh, so the next section is going to be noticing something about that that particular way of writing the solution set, and we'll see you then next time. Very nice, and that's there we go. Uh, okay, <laughs> bye bye.